Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with episode number 9 of the Atletico Madrid career mode series here on Xbox One. Now yesterday we took on Real Madrid, were able to get a point and picked up wins in La Liga later on against Almeria and a win against Pacos Ferreira in the Champions League. So we're hoping to continue that run of form, the run of unbeaten league form especially, where you'll be able to see as it pops up on screen. Three wins, four draws, no defeats so far. We're doing very, very well in the league and hoping to, uh, to continue that vein of form, like I say, here at home against Celta Vigo. Now, we actually have picked up most of our uh, most of our wins away from home on the road so we really need to improve our home form if we possibly can we almost got off to a great start here but unfortunately the run was a couple of two or three yards offside it was just poorly timed and i wasn't able to get the cross in uh, as soon as i may have liked but as you can see there really wasn't anything doing in the first half one shot that which was uh, the one that went in that was offside so uh, we head into the second half hoping for a better performance it has to be said the conditions weren't helping good flowing passing football but we were able to put a really nice move together here and unfortunately the goalkeeper is able to uh, to make a good save from Afloy then we aren't quite able to take the lead but uh, Emiliano in sewer does doesn't have too much pace but clearly has enough here to just power around the outside of their entire team before standing the ball up up goes Ibrahim Afli to grab us the 1-0 lead that we've been going for. And Afli, I'm playing him up top at the minute alongside Adrian in the rotation 11 because Arda Turan is holding down that first team left mid spot. But the, I think the plan is for January is to move Af not Afli, is to move Arda Turan on, give Afli that starting left mid spot like Susayeta has staked his claim for the first team right mid spot and then replace uh, Arda Turan with a striker. So we'll have to wait and see what happens in the January transfer window maybe a loan move because we're not too sure how much money we're going to have at that particular moment but at the minute we don't need a striker because Adrian is pulling finishes out of his back pocket what a strike to round out this game to give us a 2-0 advantage just 20 minutes from time you can see how disappointed the Celta Vigo players are but great strength from him there to hold off the one defender he's right footed don't forget he's a wonderful finish on his weaker foot a cross goal off the inside of the post and we're going to try and push for a third to kill the game off if we possibly can Christian Rodriguez plays the ball into Diego nice turn round the corner to Afolai but it's a tame shot and unfortunately the goalkeeper is He's able to get himself behind it and uh, we aren't able to extend our lead. But the advantage is played there. We push forward. Afli involved again. Out to Gilavoga. Back to Adrian. Another wonderful flowing move that ends with an Afli shot. This time not on target. The goalkeeper doesn't have to make a save. And unfortunately, again, we have to go without another goal. But Celta Vigo came back at me towards the end of the game. Made it a little bit squeaky bum time, to be completely honest. Because Grandelli is going to get the ball here. Whip it in. Lovely diving header from Charles. Or stooping header to, uh, to bring them back into the game at 2-1. Just a couple of minutes from time. But fortunately we were going to be able to hold on and pick up three points and a vital win that we needed to propel us further towards the top of the league table we come back to, uh, to a rather nice message from the board they say we want to mention our satisfaction with the quality of football we're seeing from the lads we understand that you uh, are under a lot of media pressure we want to ensure you that you're considered an invaluable member of the Atletico Madrid family which is very very pleasing indeed what isn't pleasing is the fact that Joshua uh, Guilavoga is going to be out for three weeks with uh, with an injury so well, that's disappointing especially considering we aren't that uh, that strong when it comes to defensive midfielders I let Mario Suarez go which I do feel was the correct decision but it has left us a little bit vulnerable because of course we were hoping to get Mateo Kovacic in maybe even another defensive mid but we weren't able to do that we couldn't agree a deal we ran out of money almost but as you can see we sit third in the table now just one point off the top where Sevilla sit but we travel away to Espanyol now this is kind of the battle of the second teams because of course Real Madrid are uh, undoubtedly the best and most famous team from uh, from Madrid. And Barcelona are most definitely the best and most famous team from Barcelona. But Espanyola, the second team in Barcelona, and Atleti, are, of course, the second team in Madrid. So this is kind of the battle of the two big cities on a, kind of a lesser scale almost. But uh, it's definitely still a, a fixture that we want to come out on top of. Espanyol are a decent side. They've not necessarily done as well as they could have done in uh, in recent years, but they still definitely pose a threat. They've had a few good players. Of course, if you remember, Jose Calajon made his name at Espanyol before moving on to uh, to Real Madrid and then subsequently on to Napoli as well. But Gabi comes close there. Deflected effort on to Arda Turan. Fantastic save from the goalkeeper. He gets to the third shot as well, but unfortunately for him, he's only able to help it on its way over the line into the back of the net and Marco Susayeta picks himself up another goal he's been 
so good for us, honestly. Absolutely spectacular, a wonderful signing, so much attacking threat going forward, not only in, uh, in a passing and assist way, but also in a goal-scoring vein as well. He picked up a couple of goals against Valladolid. I think that's his fourth of the season. I may be mistaken, it may only be his third, but still, very, very pleased that he's had such an immediate impact coming into this team. As have all the signings, really, to be fair. Inigo Martinez has definitely performed at centre-back, especially considering Diego Godin has been out injured for a little while. And Afli as well has done very, very well. But a goal from a player that's been at Atletico for a while, Arda Turan, absolutely smashes that into the back of the net. It's a beautiful finish. Just half an hour in, we take a 2-0 lead. Kind of against the run of play, it has to be said. Espanyol were causing me troubles going the other way, but uh, it was just... The difference in this one was the ability to be clinical in front of goal, which is something we haven't done recently. Goalkeepers have been very, very good against us, but uh, we were able to, uh, to take a 2-0 lead here. Great strike, bending away from the goalkeeper from the moment it left his boot, and we went in at half-time with that 2-0 advantage in our favour. So we're trying to build on that in the second half, if we possibly can, because, of course... Celta Vigo came back at us and made it 2-1 in, uh, in the dying moments, and I really didn't want to have that sort of uh, pressure on me again. But just 5 to 10 minutes after the restart, they were going to tidily slot that ball into the back of the net, and Sweeky Bum time did return. And uh, unfortunately, Espanyol get themselves back in the game, but this time we were going to try and kill it off if we possibly can. Diego Costa, a great strike, and it's only a good save from the goalkeeper up to his right-hand side that's able to keep us out, but we continued to pile the pressure on. Diego Costa can't quite get on the end of that cross. It goes out for another corner, so we're going to whip it in again. Koke is going to be the man to stand it up. Ball goes up. It's actually Diego Godin back from injury that wins the header. But the referee blows this whistle for a penalty. And I wasn't too sure what for, but you'll be able to see as we show the replay. The arm comes across. It's definitely for handball. So we have to rely on Diego Costa to extend the lead. He puts the penalty really, really well into the left-hand side of the goal. The goalkeeper dives away to his, the, the correct way. But uh, unfortunately for them, fortunately for us, he isn't able to get a hand on it. And we do extend the lead to 3-1. But I made a couple of attacking changes, bringing on Adrian and Christian Rodriguez for Villa and Arda Turan. Because be, you have to be honest in this situation. We're going to need a lot of goals to uh, to really have any sort of impact at the top of the league because Real Madrid and Barcelona, they're going to score a lot of goals. They're going to have a massive goal difference. If we're going to stand a chance, we're going to need the same. We can't just sit on a one or two goal lead for every single game. If I feel I have the opportunity to really go out and out attack and extend the lead and grow our goal difference and win by three or four goals then I'm just going to have to trust that gut instinct and just try and get ourselves, you know, a massive win. Diego Costa plays a lovely ball through to Wanfran, who's really unfortunate not to uh, to get himself a goal with both efforts. The, the first strike's well saved. The header was had enough power behind it, just not enough accuracy into a bottom corner. Unfortunately, the goalkeeper makes a save. We do take the 3-1 win, which is it's enough at this stage. It has to be said. We're still at the stage where we're just pleased to be winning games on a consistent basis. But another blow. We get Diego Godin back from injury and then Toby Alderweireld out on international duty with, with Belgium has lateral collateral ligament damage and unfortunately is going to be out for two months. So uh, Inigo Martinez, Diego Godin and Miranda are going to be seeing a lot of football, a lot of rotation football. They are going to get tired, but hopefully we'll be able to deal with it. But uh, they got their uh, the work cut out here against Juventus at home. As you can see, every single team in the group has played two has won one and lost one. And we're all on three points. So this could not be a bigger fixture in the in the overall story of the group. And uh, we didn't get off to the best of starts, to be honest. Juventus was so good in these opening stages. Honestly, I just hand on heart could not cope with how they were attacking me. They were ferocious in the tackle, very, very high tempo that they played, and extremely strong defensively, as you would expect for an Italian team. But they got a stroke of luck for their first goal strike. There was nothing I could do about the finish. It was just unlucky that it had rebounded back to him in uh, in the manner that it did. But uh, take nothing away from that finish. Stefan Lichtsteiner on his weaker foot pulls that finish out of the bag. It's just, uh, it's just phenomenal, isn't it? Even in slow motion, you can barely keep up with it. It's just a ridiculous strike. So we go one year down early on, trying to get ourselves back in it. Koke with a decent strike, well blocked. Costa hits the inside of the post. Buffon is a fantastic goalkeeper, but he isn't able to keep that one out. But the post is the woodwork. 
is uh, unfortunately to Juventus's rescue. And they're going to break away, go up the other end. Tevez is the, the instigator into Fernando Llorente, who just rips me apart. Turns one way, then the other into Polo. It's actually going to find its way back to Fernando Llorente here. And uh, he's going to tear me apart again. Turn inside, a fantastic, accurate, powerful finish into that bottom corner. And before we've even got 20 minutes into the game, we find ourselves 2-0 down really really up against it and I was concerned that this game might be getting away from us but Adrian is going to do really well here after losing out on possession the first time around he really puts pressure on the defender squares the ball I don't know I just I don't know okay I don't know how he's missed that fantastic work from Adrian to win the ball back from Martin Caceres square the ball across how can you miss that just how? I, don't, I, don't, I have no words. There are no words that any commentator can come up with for how awful that miss is. And uh, hopefully it wasn't going to cost us. But as you can see, Juventus were piling on the press yet again. Into Tevez, back to Marquisio. It hits the outside of the post. We get a let off. 3-0 would definitely have put the game beyond our reach. But at 2-0, we still stand a chance. Get one back. They may get a bit, little bit nervous. And uh, we might be able to capitalise on that. But Adrian does particularly well there. To turn the defender one way, twist it back onto his face favoured right foot and power the finish into the back of the goal. Just watch on the replay the way that the defender just overcommits to one side and uh, then we're able to cut back across, find that little bit of space, bend the ball away from Buffon into the back of the net and get ourselves back into the game at 2-1. But they came at me again and uh, we were actually able to get a decent tackle in there but we can't react in time. Marquisio pounces on it into Lichsteiner, up goes the ball, good save from Courtois but he's going to have to get back up on his feet really, really quickly because Quadraya Samoa was there with a the header on the rebound. Unfortunately, Courtois was able to rebound Bound up like a cat and get himself to the second ball. Adrian gets a stroke of luck here, breaks past Chiellini. He's going to get the strike away, but Gianluigi Buffon is a wonderful goalkeeper and he's not going to let a tame effort like that trickle past him into the back of the net. It was on target, it was still a decent effort, but the strength from the uh, defender on his shoulder was just enough to put him off enough for him not to be able to get the ball past the goalkeeper. But Koke is going to whip the corner in, up goes Diego Godin. What a header. So, so unfortunate that we weren't able to get ourselves back in the game. Even when we do beat Buffon, that's twice now that we've hit the inside of the post and not come away with a goal. So we push into the second half. Diego Costa with a great strike. And this time, it's the goalkeeper that gets in the way. Buffon is making save after save. We really stepped up. I was really pleased with the way that we fought back in this game. After a very, very rocky start, we definitely bounced back. We showed a lot of character. Koke is going to play the ball through the gap here, through to Wanfran. It's a wonderful ball. Stands it up to Susayeta at the front post and we get ourselves back in the game. That's 2-2. Two, two. We're back on level terms. Now I was hoping we were going to push on and maybe even try and threaten to take the win. If we possibly could. Juventus loose with possession there into Adrian. He's got two willing runners. One of which is Susayeta again breaking free. Takes it first time. And if that had flown tops I would have gone mental. I'd have gone absolutely spastic in delight. But unfortunately it was straight into Buffon's arms. And we're only able to take a point. But crucially we didn't lose. With all of the teams being very very close on own points in uh, in the Champions League group so far. The crucial thing was to not lose. And as you can see the points we picked up in the league are also just as crucial. Although Barcelona still have a game in hand. We are level on points at the top of the table. 19 apiece for us at Barcelona and Real Betis. Real Madrid and Sevilla just two behind and then a further two down to Atletico Bilbao. But that's going to uh, that's going to end this particular episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. You will have another episode of the My Player series coming to you later on tonight. So be sure to check your sub boxes for that. If you want to subscribe to the channel, be sure to do so. There's a link in the description and an annotation on the screen on the right-hand side there over that YouTube emblem and the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on anything new from me. And if you missed yesterday's video, there's an annotation on the screen over the little play button there to take you to that video. But that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.